Welcome to Learning Chinese Provinces, Part One. China is a huge country with almost 1.4 billion people. Geographically, it's the third largest country in the world and has an area of almost four million square miles. Administratively, China includes 22 provinces, five autonomous regions. Four municipalities that are not part of any province, two special administrative regions, and one self-governing area. That's five categories with a total of 34 place names. At times during this presentation, I will use the term provinces generically to describe all 34 areas. What are their names? To English speakers, Chinese place names can seem a bit confusing. Some names even sound very similar to each other. Compare the names of these three provinces: Hainan, Henan, Hunan. All three names are similar. Listen to these two province names: Shanxi. Shanxi. The differences in spelling and pronunciation are very subtle, and those two provinces are next door neighbors. Do you think that it will be difficult to learn the names and where the provinces are located? Maybe, but compare this task to that of students, visitors, or immigrants trying to learn the names and locations of America's fifty states. Can you point to Alabama? This is difficult, even for many who grew up in the United States. But consider this: What if I showed you the location of South Dakota? You could probably figure out where to find North Dakota. Or if I show you the location of North Carolina, you can guess where to find South Carolina. Having states whose names include a direction like north or south helps a lot, so those were easy. But the names of most American states don't even give a hint. What about the names and locations of Chinese provinces? Relax, they are much easier. Many Chinese provinces use descriptive names. In fact. Thirteen out of the thirty-four administrative areas include the words for north, south, east, or west. Learning the Chinese words for the compass points, plus a handful of other words such as mountain, river, and lake, will make many Chinese province names easy. This video will include examples of a native Chinese speaker demonstrating correct place name pronunciation. Some viewers may be actively learning Chinese. To aid their studies, pinyin with proper tone marks will be displayed. But don't panic. Our goal is learning geography, not perfecting Chinese pronunciation. At the end of this video, you should be able to effectively discuss Chinese province names with other English speakers, as well as recognize provinces on a map. As we begin, let's pause for a few minutes and consider the names of a few well-known Chinese cities. Let's look at three capital cities, past and present. Xi'an became the capital of China a few centuries before the Common Era under the first emperor of China. Notice that the X is pronounced as sh. 
Nanjing was the capital during the rule of eight imperial dynasties, starting around 1,800 years ago. It was also the capital of the Republic of China during several periods. In the West, we used to call this city Nanking. Beijing is both a past and present capital city. We used to call it Peking. Beijing is also one of the municipalities that are not part of any province. I mention these cities because their names include the Chinese words for compass points. Beijing includes the word for north. Bei means north. Nanjing includes the word for south. Nan means south. Xi'an includes the word for west. Xi means west. We can use the names of these cities to remember three of the four compass points. Beijing literally means north capital. So to remember Bei, remember Beijing. Nanjing means south capital. Think of Nanjing to remember that south is Nan. Xi'an means western peace. Remember it to know that Xi means west. We will use another method to remember the Chinese word for east. The word for east is Dong. Well, the sun rises in the east, so we use the English word dawn to remember that Dong is the Chinese word for east. Okay. Let's learn the names and locations of some important provinces in the heartland of China. Many areas of China have mountains, but let's focus on a couple of mountain systems in northeast China. Shan is the Chinese word for mountain. Look at the Chinese written character. It even looks like a mountain. There are provinces to the east and the west of these mountains. Combine the words for mountain and east, and we have Shandong. This is the name of the province to the east of these mountains. Mountain and west give us Shanxi, the name of the province to the west of the mountains. Nearby is a province called Shanxi. Although Shan sounds much like the word for mountain, it is not. Imagine those two letter A's as two mountains with a road, path, or river running between the peaks. We are describing a mountain pass. The name Shan is given to a mountain pass located at the red dot in the image. Remember, Shan does not mean a mountain pass, but it is the name of a specific pass. So the Chinese call the province to the west of this pass Shan plus west Shanxi province. It's pretty easy to remember where these three provinces are and also their names. Note where the capital Beijing is in relation to these provinces. The Yellow River springs from headwaters high in the mountains of western China. It is the sixth longest river in the world and flows through nine provinces. The basin of the Yellow River is considered one of the world's three cradles of civilization. In China, it is known as the Mother River. According to legend, it is the earthly continuation of the celestial Milky Way. In the Chinese language, He is a word for river. Observe the unlabeled provinces to the north and south of the river. River plus north produces Hebei, the name of the province to the north of the river. Combining river and south gives us Henan, the province south of the river. Consider the words we have learned so far. You can see how they are used to name the illustrated provinces. 
That was easy. Let's keep going. Lake Dongting, shown on our map, has been enlarged to illustrate its location. The lake's position is good to remember, but its name is not important. The Chinese word for lake is Hu. You can probably guess how learning that word will help us. Lake plus north gives us Hubei, the name of the province north of this lake. Adding south after the word for lake produces Hunan, the province south of the lake. Let's learn the name and location of another Chinese city. Guangzhou has a population of 13 million people, making it the third largest city in China. You may have heard the name given to the city by Portuguese traders and colonists. Canton. Notice that in the Chinese name of the city, ZH is pronounced much like the English J. J. Remember the name Guangzhou. The first part of the city's name, Guang, is also the name given to a large region of southern China. The word Guang is generally translated into English as expanse. So this large area of China is the expanse. Guang. What do you suppose the names of the provinces that comprise the expanse are? For the eastern province, we use Guang plus the word for east. This gives us Guangdong. And the western province? You guessed it. Guang plus the word for west. Guangxi. For simplicity, we have called this a province. Actually, it is one of five autonomous regions in China. For now, just remember that its name is Guangxi. Let's take another look at Beijing. The capital of the People's Republic of China, Beijing, is one of four self-governing municipalities, not part of any province. You can see from the map that it is mostly enclosed by the province of Hebei. China's use of descriptive names has made learning these place names super easy. We have already covered 10 of the 34 administrative areas. Ready to test yourself? Look at the map. What is the name of the capital city in the north of China? Yep. Beijing. In this province, to the east of the mountains. Correct. Shandong. What about the one west of the mountains? Yes. Shanxi. You're on a roll. In the province to the west of a certain named pass? Shanxi. That's right. Okay. What is the province north of the river? Hebei. You are correct. South of the river? What is the province? Yes. Henan. North of the lake? Lake plus north. Hubei. South of the lake? Yes. Hunan. The east side of the expanse? Guangdong. The west side of the expanse?
广西。That was almost too easy. Let's pause for some tips on pronunciation and spelling. The romanized spelling of Chinese place names is based on a system called pinyin. The sounds of pinyin don't always correspond with common pronunciation of those spellings in English. Listen to the names of these two provinces: Henan, Hunan. Notice that H E is not pronounced as he. This Chinese word for river sounds more like he. He, Henan. The Chinese word for lake sounds like hu. Hu, Hunan. Chinese is a tonal language, and written pinyin normally includes four different tone marks over vowels. Look at the pinyin spelling of the capital city. Those tone marks help indicate the tone of each syllable. In English language books, maps, and tourist brochures, we drop the special tone marks. Let's re-examine the names of two provinces. Shanxi, Shanxi. This is very difficult. There is a very subtle difference in the tone of the first syllable. Here, Shan has a high-level tone. Shanxi. Here, Shan has a lower, falling tone. Shanxi. Unless someday you choose to learn to speak Chinese, the difference in these sounds is a challenge. The majority of English speakers have difficulty hearing the difference, and it takes a lot of practice to reproduce the sounds. At least among other English speakers, you may be safer to just differentiate by saying "Shanxi with one a" or "Shanxi with two a's." Okay. Let's test ourselves again. This time without the hints. What's the name of this city? Beijing. What's the name of this province? Shandong. What's the name of this province? Shanxi. What's the name of this province? Shanxi. What's the name of this province? Hebei. What's the name of this province? Henan. What's the name of this province? Hubei. What's the name of this province? Hunan. What's the name of this province? Guangdong. What's the name of this autonomous region? Guangxi. How did you do? Watching this presentation a few times will help solidify your understanding.
Let's learn two more place names. The city of Shanghai does not belong to any province. You are probably already familiar with its name. Shanghai is the most populous city in China. Actually, it is the most populous city in the world. Twenty-four million people. Just imagine. In comparison, New York has only nine million. Shanghai is the financial capital of China and sits right on China's east coast. Hai means sea. Shanghai means on the sea. Now a bonus province. This province is an island located off the south coast of the Chinese mainland. Its name combines the word for sea, hai, with the name for south, nan. The name of this island province is Hainan. This presentation has demonstrated that many Chinese provinces use logical descriptive names. We have reached the end of part one of learning Chinese provinces. Once you are comfortable with this material, continue on to part two.